So our first match, I don't know why I said that with the second match, but whatever. Or the first match. What the fuck ever is going on? And it's am, the first... I am, I am so fucking flustered right now. Like, I don't know why. First match everywhere. of the main show. First match of the main show. Second match in. I think that's where my brain is, but everything is happening. So, it was the Ultimate X match. Josh Alexander, Trey Miguel, Ace Austin, Petey Williams, Rohit Raju, Chris Bay. This match was awesome. Yes. Um, there um, was, so, there, there so was... the one, the one thing I remember from this match was Petey Williams doing the Canadian Destroyer off of one person's shoulders. It was Josh Alexander, and I think he yeah. hit it on Chris Bay, and it was really yep. cool. The one thing that I remember from this match, and honestly, if you were going to find an Ultimate X match to watch, this is the match to watch. It was that good. The guy who won was not. He's obviously not an X Division, right? Like, um, no, he's, he's not your typical. Look, because X Division is not about the cruiserweights. It's about just that the whole, high the high flying style. But really but you have Josh Alexander, who's not the high flyer, being it, just a, just the fucking star of this division, right. bringing it back. Um, the one spot that I remember was Josh Alexander was upside down on the Ultimate X. He applied the ankle lock. Oh, I remember that one. He, then Ace Austin tries to like. No, no, wait, no, no. So oh. what? So what it was? Shut up. What it was was that Josh Alexander had the ankle lock on Chris Bay upside down. Yeah. Chris Bay was not even touching the ground, and Chris Bay had a headlock on, I think, Petey Williams, who had a sharpshooter on. Oh, I remember that one. Yeah. The tree looking right. thing. It, it, look, it looked like a big tree, and Ace Austin was in there. Rohit Raju kind of rolled out of there, right. but no. it, was a, it was a clusterfuck, and that was a cool spot. Like, right. It took a lot I, of I also remember um, um, Josh Alexander and um, Petey – no, not Petey Williams. Um, was it Chris Saban? They were – no, Saban, not Chris, Chris Saban. Saban's not even in the match. No, no. It was, it, was, it was him and one other guy. I can't remember who it was. Was it – it wasn't Ace Austin because Ace Austin tried to go in between them to steal the title off of them. Remember that one? I think you're being. I think you're thinking about Trey Miguel. Yeah, it was Trey. It was Trey Miguel, and um, and uh, Josh Alexander. They were fighting. So the, the no, title. no, you know what? No, no, no. It was Chris Bay. It was Chris Bay who was in between. Right. Um, it was um, Ace Austin was trying to do the AJ Styles spot to steal the title off, right. but he totally missed because he um, Bay and Alexander lifted the title up, so he totally missed. Right, and then Ale that's why that's why I was saying it was, it was, the, ending, was, very, it was yeah. the ending segment right. of the show. I remember that or that the was match. The, that was the end of the match. Right, um, a great segment. I mean, just this Ultimate X match was just awesome. It was just awesome, and despite me being all over the place right now for no apparent reason. Um, if this was just a really great match. Right. I can't say enough about it. All right, so we're not only going to make Impact Wrestling and Slammiversary Majestic again, but we're going to make Pro Wrestling Majestic again. Imp er, Impact Wrestling. Pina Gallery. Let's talk about the opening match. Fire and Flava, Havoc and Rosemary. What do you got? How are you going to make this Majestic again? Let's talk about the fact that NWA is bringing back the Women's Tag Team Champions. They never had a Women's Tag Team Champions. They did back in the 70s. No, they did not. They did. They did not. The NWA did, yes. No, they did not. They did. They did not. <laughs> it actually was transferred to the WWWF. Yeah, but it was not... It, they were... Tra you know what? I'm not going to argue. They were the NWA you know. Women's Tag Team Champions. Nope. They were in existence until like 1979. <laughs> you really want to have me with this, brah? Wrong. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. It, it, today's just been one of those why, days why don't, where why I'm you not having it. And because I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and bitch about it. You should have had your shit down here. It's upstairs. Well, I don't need to have my shit down here anyways. So anyway, this match, it was exactly where it needed to be on the pre-show. I don't know what you can do. I feel like them bringing back these titles was a mistake. I'm sorry. They do not have enough people to go for these titles. Yeah. Now, maybe with the inclusion of the NWA Women's Tag Team Champions, maybe. But at the same time, how are you going to do that? You're going to have another Women's Tag Team Champions where... Just have a women's tag team champions that span between AEW, um, Impact Wrestling, NWA, Tripla A, all of these different places instead of the knockouts. In the NWA, you're going to oversaturate the market, and they're already doing that. Uh, I don't, I, I, I don't think so. But anyways, I'm, I'm sorry. This is my, these are my personal opinions, so people don't bitch. Anyway. 
Um, I had somebody saying that, or representation saying that um, Jonathan Gresham being the best representative of the pure division was a mistake, but it's like, it's an opinion. This is an opinion. Unfortunately, our opinions are right. Anyway. <laughs> Let's talk about where our opinions are, should have been right. Omega should have lost this belt. He, if he is as injured as he claims to be, he should have dropped the belt to fucking Kenny fucking, not Kenny Omega, Sammy fucking Callahan. He is he not, he is, he is not finessing as he usually does. He is trying his best, but you can tell. Kenny Omega needs some time to heal. Give him like six months. The wrestling industry will be fine without him. I understand. They're trying their best to compete with WWE because of Reigns. I get it. But You've at the same time, already competed with the WWE, and you're doing fantastic. Omega's back is injured. His knees are injured. If you continue, you want him to walk out on a stretcher and have him vacate all the titles? I'd right. rather not. Right. And, you know, we had this same thing. So we actually talked about this earlier about McGregor's... Um, hyperextension in his legs. You're going to have another situation like this if you continue it. Unless Omega's injuries are not as bad as what I've heard. Unless right. they're he's not doing, that he's bad. Doing, he's doing stem cell therapy and he's saying he's feeling better, but at the same time, it's still not his finesse. He needs a rest. And him dropping this belt right now at Slammiversary to somebody who has defeated Find Impact Wrestling for the last, what, four years? Sammy like Callahan Sammy Callahan. is one of the best characters in, in the history of, now, of wrestling. If, if you wanted me to be personally speaking, it should have been Moose too. It should have been Moose. It should have been Moose. But if given the same circumstances, Callahan should have been the guy. Oh, yeah. Because then Omega did not lose in a pure wrestling match. He lost in a no DQ match. So Callahan would have had the belt. Omega could, you know, could have taken the right. rest from that fucking schedule, being their world title holder. Right. I mean, it's we're, we're doing this not saying against because at, at some point Kenny Omega is, at, at, at some at some point in time a person's health um, takes precedence over business, right. and that right now that's what's going on here. I mean, it is. I'm sorry. Right. It is. Anyway. I can't do anything about this. They built There's this nothing. Perfectly. This is a perfect. They they built they. Built it was a this great perfectly. way. It was a great way to establish new rivals for the division as um, well. They had a five way match where it ended in a draw where all of them had all of right. the they had all of the same credibility to go for this title and they did it great. Perfect placement of the match. Perfect timing of pretty much yep. everything. There were there were some fuck ups. Um, with Ace Austin and um, I think it was uh, Chris Bay with a cutter. Hmm? That one was a little fucked up. But I'll give some. That's obviously just like one itty bitty mistake in a match that was very good. Everybody looked awesome in oh, this yeah. match. Um, crowd was hot for it. I can't really say anything bad about it. No. Nope. Um, Josh Alexander, I think. Here's my thing. Josh Alexander, I believe, has gone away from the North as a team. He has be, he has come into his own. He has he has come into his own. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. This one was kind of weird for me. Once again, I, I was gonna bitch about this, so Bad. I'm going to now. They are doing moose dirty right now. Oh god yes. The thing is but, I like but what if what if but what if what if this is Moose saying in the future that he becomes the mega heel because he knows that he's being screwed. Maybe, but at the same time, okay, I like Chris Saban. I really do. I do too. And honestly, with this win, he is the next logical right. contender for Chris. Down for Chris glory. Saban. Chris Saban deserves and especially a, a world title match. Especially a TNA original like Saban. He's he's, I, he's not going to get it at Bound for Glory. I think he should. He's he's not going to. I wish he would. <laughs> he's, he's, it's not going to happen. Of, of, any, of anybody to go for the Impact World Champion at Bound for Glory, Chris Saban is the most logical choice right but now. But it's not going to happen. Unfortunately, it probably It's going to be an Impact Plus special. If you want this shit just to be... Like, just like the Jay White. The Jay White match is going to happen right. on Impact, the 31st. Right. Impact Wrestling, if you want this shit to be majestic again, you're going to put Chris Saban in for the world title of Bound for Glory. You're not going to do this bullshit Impact Plus bullshit. Because you know and I know nobody watches it. 
Anyway. That's true. I don't watch it. Right. If you want to do something with Omega and White, great. Book and, that for the and, Impact Plus and, because you'll get more subscriptions. And if you want us to watch it, we're more than happy to take your Patreon money. We'll take Patreon money or if Impact Wrestling wants to hire us for some common sense fucking wrestling, just let us fucking know. Right. We're not racist like Cornette. Anyway. Or like, um, well, D'Lo Brown's not racist, but... D'Lo... D'Lo Brown's awesome. What are you talking about? D'Lo Brown is the bee's knees. Right. He's the bee's knees to the knees. Anyway. Um, Nation of Domination. Anyway. Um, the match itself was fine. I thought it told a good story, but at the same time, Chris Sabin winning, I just feel like with Moose, they're really devaluing him. All right. All right. Here we go. Um, I was kind of disappointed. I was... I was Here's the thing. Let's talk about this in general. I like the, I like I like Thunder Rosa. Don't get me wrong. So number one, she follows me on Twitter. Number two, I think she's really hot. Number three, I think if they maybe had a little more of a teaser, I would have cared. But at the same time, I just so I will counter that by saying that <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Yes, she is yummy as Candyland. Number three, I'm kind of you know. I don't know if I'm disappointed by... I'm taking away your mind. I don't know if I'm disappointed <laughs> by the fact that Tiger Height just took away my wine <laughs> or if I'm disappointed by the fact that... Did you feel like the the debuts were a little underwhelming compared to last year? I will say there is that because they weren't as obvious. So so who did we get for debuts? We got Chelsea Green. Right. We have um, Aiden well, English. It was, well, yes, Aiden English. So that was the other thing. Um, they had, like, um, the drama king, like, um, welcome back to the king, but it right. had drama on the top. I'm like, that's Aiden English. Nobody Obviously, you have No Way, who was No Way Jose and that, that was cool. I will say, a lot of these surprises were more surprising, but at the same time, we kind of know who was going to win, so I feel like the surprises were right. like, so, who cares? I mean... It's kind of a double-edged sword for me. I and mean, this is also, a good... Okay, okay, with this one especially, you yeah. had Thunder Rosa wrestling the match, but then immediately after, you had Mickey James. Thunder Rosa has never wrestled in this company, ever. Right. This was supposed to be Mickey James. It was. Because Mickey James is a former Knockouts champion. Yep. She's already wrestled here. Thunder Rosa has never been exposed to this audience. And, 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 people you, are like, know, and you know oh, why? Oh, they're all the same. No, there is a difference between Impact, AEW, and NWA You fans. know why? Because Mickey James is still under 90 day. I'm aware of this, but she still did appear. She still did a move. Do you think that still combats that? No. No? All right. No. Because Mickey James' contract specifically stated that she can make appearances for the company, but she cannot mm. compete. Oh, I see how this rolls. So if, if Mickey James was allowed to compete, she would have competed. Do you know when her 90 day is up, by the way? Oh, God. When was she released? Like sometime in May? I think so. So it'll be sometime in August. So here's the thing. She is not going to be. Uh, she is not going to be competing at Empower. No, but she's she producing is, that. But she is competing at the seventy third anniversary show. Like that's already confirmed. I see some Mickey James versus Deanna Perrazzo for double gold because Deanna Perrazzo is going to win double gold at fucking Triple Mania. You forgot what the name of that brand was. For about <laughs> three seconds, I forgot. I, I just kind of know when Pina Gallery's, like, um, his uh, crank said, like, stopped working entirely. <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, I did like the match. I feel like it was a little overwhelming because then you had Mickey James come out, and that kind of devalued, like, the thing of Thunder Rosa right. being on this show. Um, okay. Number one, I thought them adding No Way to this match was a very good idea. His name, his, his name was No I said, Way. I said No Way. I know. I did not say No, no Way. It's, it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to say No Way. H. J. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, Peanut Gallery does not know how to spell. Um, this one, so I like the buildup. I thought they did an okay-ish job with yeah. the buildup. Number one, I thought feel like they probably should have told what was going on with TJP because a lot of people were more concerned about it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, that's an invasion of privacy. Yeah, but people are more so of like, we just want to make sure that he's okay. Because why? If he was just taken off because he was taken off, that's stupid. Right. 
It was like, okay, for a surprise, that's retarded. If you could have done that so much better. Right. I mean, if you were going to do that, something like that, I would have said, oh, violent design, violent by design, attacked um, TJP during the pre-show. He's taken out of the match. Falaba has to find a new person. Right. That would have been a much better thing than TJP is just mysteriously gone two days before the event, worrying everybody right and then doing this because he did have a match a couple of days ago with mlw right so why did he why was he taken off of this a lot of people are concerned about right. that so um i thought that i mean it was kind of a cluster but at the same time you know spot fest tag team whatever it was fine right. i liked it um there wasn't really much i could have changed other than that mm -hmm. to be honest with you i thought they did an okay job with this this was awesome. It was a good match. Um, I think this really established W. Morrissey as, like, the next big guy. Oh, yeah. To take out the heart and soul of Impact Wrestling, despite them having Chris Saban, whatever, it's fine. Um, or James Storm, whatever, it's fine. It's not like they're originals or anything. Or Eric yeah. Young, oh, whatever, it's fine. It's fine. Anyway. Eddie, Eddie Edwards, he's, he's the proverbial loser, so we'll just keep it at that. He's like your nice little workhorse that just continues to lose. Looks like a total asshole. Yeah. I don't know why this guy's popular. He's just, I don't know. He's Eddie Edwards. He's a good wrestler, right. but he just never felt he, he special. To he me. has the charisma of a pin. He really does. Now him as a heel, I like heel Eddie Edwards. Oh yeah, like crazy Eddie Edwards is awesome. But then he churned babyface, and he's kind of lame. No one cares about him. Right. Exactly. W Now, W. Morrissey has charisma up the ass now. Right. It's tall Edge. Right. Jesus. He looks like Edge. He looks like Edge, but he works awesome. Mm -hmm. Really plays to that. He is explosive and fast. Yep. His promos are excellent. He looks physically amazing. And, I mean, honestly, if if I was going to sign anybody and build a company around him, W. Morrissey would make pro wrestling majestic again. Right. Anyways, let's move on to the next match because I feel like we're saying we're welcome. Nope. Okay. Myers Dash was so it's all about it was all about Myers. Why? What? I don't understand the point. I literally it was did not all about Myers the point. and Cardona. That's it. That's all it was. There was no point of Dashwood and Chelsea Green to be in there other no. than to have Chelsea Green in there. That was it. That was pretty much it. Yep. This match this was, was not making pro wrestling majestic again. Not at all. Zero. But I you're gonna have you're gonna have Myers and Cardona. If, if you if you wanted something really cool with this. With the heated rivalry with Cardona and Myers, because they had a great, they have a great rivalry. They're gonna, I would have, I would have, I would have done, I would have done something cool like false count anywhere, hardcore, um, unsanctioned fight. That's what I would have done. They're, they're done saving that for Bath Glory. So awesome. So um, I think that was, I think that's actually it. So that's how you fucking make this shit majestic again. So when we come back, Peanut Gallery. We're going to have an open-ended discussion about the King of the Mountain match. We are. <laughs> 